Swift students, I'm Professor John Gallagher, and in this lesson we'll show you how you can get set up and ready to code along with the rest of the tutorials in our playlist. Now you're going to need Apple's free Xcode software, you'll need a free Apple developer account, and you'll need to configure Xcode with that developer account. Now this lesson is a short one, but downloading Xcode actually takes quite a bit of time. It's a big App Store download, then when you first start Xcode, more software components install, so plan on starting the process and checking back periodically to see if things have completed. Now to follow along, you're going to need a Mac and Apple's free Xcode software, which you can find in the Mac App Store. You can type Xcode, one word, into the search box. This is Xcode here. If you select this, then on the next screen, this button here should read Get. I've already got mine installed. You can click that Get button to start the download and installation. And if you've got an older Mac or a Mac with a small amount of free hard drive space, you might run into some problems. If you scroll down here to the Information section, you can see how much space is required required for installation, although in the past I've found that you usually need more free space than what's indicated here, and this compatibility section will give you information on the minimum required version of Mac OS. It takes a while to download, so while you're waiting, also head over to developer.apple.com and register your Apple ID for a free Apple developer account. You don't need the paid account to build apps, only if you want to submit your app to the App Store. Now, once you've downloaded Xcode, start it up. Make sure the iOS option is checked here. You don't need to check the other ones. They'll take up space, and we're not going to be working with watchOS or tvOS yet. Accept all of the defaults and any security requests. Then, once Xcode is up and running, you'll need to enter your Apple ID and Xcode. To do that, under the Xcode menu, select Settings. Make sure you've clicked the Account tab at the top. I have some IDs on the left-hand side. Yours should be empty. Then click the plus button, select Apple ID, then continue. You'll be asked to verify the Apple ID that you just set up at developer.apple.com. When you do that, you'll see it listed on the left-hand side. Then you can click the red traffic light to close this window. Now that we've got Xcode set up with our Apple ID, let's quit out of Xcode. In the next lesson, I'll show you how you can set up your first Xcode project, and I'll give you some important background info on how Xcode works, and point out some things that have tripped up students in the past. Giddy up!